FKATD. So I have something kind of really special, and you guys will love this. This is the Prototype 7 Series. How do I know it's a prototype, and how can I verify this? Well, this is how early reversion. This is number two. So this is the second Prototype 7 Series. And what's so special about this? Well, obviously we have, now it comes with an anti-surge housing. We use an O-ring. This has a massive three inch inlet uh, that comes there. You're gonna need either PRL inlet or you can buy RV6's inlet. And we have a true 30 series turbine wheel. So what does this mean? This means that we're actually gonna have the proper amount of exhaust flow balance out the compressor wheel to make big horsepower. This is going on the car today. Dyno results will be tomorrow. So uh, we're not going for a moon tune here on this. What we are going for is what kind of boost can we make on something reasonable that Honda can control and how much power can this make on how much boost? So of course we got those AM lines that are gonna be connected for the water cooling, nice big dash eight fittings. Uh, actually it might even be, yeah, that's that. I'm pretty sure it's dash eight. I don't, don't quote me on that. But again, this is gonna be the real deal. It's gonna make big power and we're just gonna see how much just showing a side-by-side -side. here is an MHI and here is the RV6 7 series the RV6 kits always come with new gaskets uh, they use AN lines instead due to the boulder in the center section they have a properly designed restrictor uh, upgraded coolant lines uh, nice bracket because the way the exhaust housing is shaped differently you have a larger ar radius so this bracket sticks out further so they have a redesigned bracket to make everything fit nicey nice one of the really nice things about the rv6 is like i said as before is the an lines we can see i take the upper red sport out it's just so much easier to gain all this access to reinstall everything and uh the an lines here and it replaces that and um this stays on but it replaces this hose and uh, the one that goes over here and around just a nicer overall setup a little bit more coolant flow in and out of the turbo just to try to keep things cool and uh, make things live longer I should have did this before I put the o-ring in here but we use in the product industry what's called high tack and uh, that helps to hold this o-ring in place that goes on this inlet uh, I forgot to do this earlier, so now I'm fighting myself here. But yeah, it's a good idea to get some product called high tack and put a couple of dabs and it'll hold the O-ring in place for you. So we are headed to the dyno with the prototype 7 series. As we can tell, it is literally the second one in existence from the Proto 2 number. Super excited. Apparently hella traffic today. Just trying to get out of a parking lot so let's just uh pray to god we get there safely you know have a good day and everything goes well we don't find any weird little kinks or issues which i don't think we will um and i think we'll do good i think we will Uh, it's a little shy on ignition timing. I didn't go crazy with it yet, and I cut it short just to be on the safe side to go check out the data log. But as you can see, we're already at 533 and 400 torque on 22 pounds. So, and uh, look at that, man, <laughs> 7,700. So we're gonna just go up slowly and uh, see how she do little by little. Yeah, so far, very, very excited with the results. Uh, she spooled very clean. As you can see, she spooled by four grand. Uh, even at uh, 30, so she hits 350 foot pounds of torque at four grand. But again, I haven't turned the boost up a lot down there. But uh, we'll just see, man. And then uh. Just take Uh, well, 
above where we were before. And uh, 22 pounds, 22 and a half to be exact, made 531. Uh, a couple yards going to go short. And I'm going to do some camp time changes to see uh, how does it affect the power in the high RPM. See if we can bring some of the power in a little bit earlier. Just to change to the cam time and we can see this fill this all in while still keeping the same peak power. So definitely change some cam timing there. I'm gonna make another cam timing change and this peak here. I think I'm gonna see if it wants a later VTEC activation. Because we see it right around 6K. She kind of put this down and kind of picked up when the boost pressure is not really coming up hard here. So uh I gotta see if maybe that's VTEC, maybe exhaust cam, uh maybe just wants more boost there. And um, she's going to 7,800, and uh, she's making power clean to 78. So uh, right now, really happy with what we're seeing so far. It's 25 pounds of boost. Well, this may not have a different peak number. This is what I've talked about before. This right here, this green line, this car, if I tune them exactly, two, two cars, and they were identical. One was like this with the cam timing. This one with the green would win, which is why I say peak numbers aren't everything. So if you guys look at my graphs, you'll really start to understand, take a close look and compare. This is why I post the graph to show you, show everybody, hey man, it's not just about a peak number. crossovers a lot later I thought it'd be but we can see we've got a super nice flat torque curve up here be really nice drivable uh, nasty is all I say this is going to be nasty uh, and really clean power curve it starts to start to clean up nice the car really kind of into that sweet spot so uh, yeah this is very impressive considering this dyno is really a ball breaker so we'll see man how much is left in this Uh, intercooler 
trailer, some tier or two cams, and uh, a ported head absolutely all day. Uh, you might even be able to, if it's cool enough out, with just tier or two cams, maybe make pretty similar power. And for a drop-in turbo, this kind of power is really kind of unheard of. So uh, I don't think I've ever seen this kind of power in a drop-in platform, at least uh, that I can recall at this point. Uh, it's just wild. So that's it. There's your results. FKTD.